I'm not so concerned with the one-off violations here or there. I get concerned when you're starting to have a pattern of violations in a particular area. So number one, you need to make sure you understand where you have gaps. The best way to do that, if you're a an interstate motor carrier, is watching your safety measurement system account on a monthly basis. That's detailing all of the violations, the regulatory compliance violations that your drivers are incurring roadside on a month to month basis. And that's where you start to look for those trends. Again, I'm not so concerned with the one off violations here or there. I get concerned when you're starting to have a pattern of violations in a particular area. So if you look on your safety measurement system account and you see that your hours of service score is starting to trend upwards, then it's time to get control of it. So now you understand where you have a gap and what do you do about that gap? Well, you, you need to do some more digging and figure out what's leading to those violations that you're incurring. If it's hours of service violations, it's probably a driver training or accountability issue. That's really all there is to explain those types of things. And so the only fix to that, it, it takes work on your part. That's what I've found a lot of motor carriers don't want to hear. That's the news they don't want to hear. They want a, so many motor carriers want a quick fix to everything. There is no quick fix to this. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes money on your part to make sure that your drivers are fully up to speed on their regulatory obligations and to hold them accountable when you are having repeat offenders, including up to termination. Nobody wants to terminate drivers in this kind of, uh, you know, driver shortage that we are allegedly in the midst of at this point, but sometimes it's, it's necessary to get rid of poor performing drivers because they are driving your company into the ground. What mistakes do you most often see that causes fleets to get audited? I would say most of the audits that I'm helping motor carriers with nowadays have been triggered by high hours of service scores. Um, and a lot of that is driven by log falsification. That's the most common hours of service related violation that we see nowadays, not substantive hours of service violations like 11 hour or 14 hour. It's log falsification. So drivers either deliberately or inadvertently uh, improperly logging their time. <clears throat> and a lot of that has to do with improper use of personal conveyance is what, I, what I've found over the years. That's the most common culprit for uh, log falsification violations. So aside from that, I would say the other one, uh, the other common mistake that I see that can prompt an audit are what the DOT considers to be red flag violations. These are serious violations, but they are usually in the form of drivers operating vehicles that require a certain type of license, usually a CDL, and them not having that type of license. So they've just got a standard operator's license, but they're out there operating a combination vehicle or a heavy straight truck that would require a CDL and they don't have it. And those can sometimes prompt an audit. What steps should new fleets take to ensure compliance with federal regulations and safety standards in the trucking industry? You got to understand the regulatory environment in which you operate. So many fleets, in my experience, fail on the compliance front just because they are not educated enough on what rules apply to their operations. And so if you don't know what rules you're playing by, then you're bound to end up with violations. And then next thing you know, you're getting an audit and you're getting shut down. So first things first, train yourself, educate yourself on the rules in which you operate, and that will go a long way to keeping you out of trouble. How can fleets stay informed about changes in safety regulations and ensure that their fleet and drivers remain compliant with the latest requirements? The way I like to stay up to date is just by following industry publications on social media. I seem to get the most timely updates about regulatory changes through that means than, than anywhere else. But if you want to subscribe to an official source of regulatory changes, you can subscribe to the Federal Register, which is where all federal regulatory changes get published. We'll link to that in the description below and then maybe some others. Anybody watching, if they want to comment their favorite trucking publication, if, if you want to share, go ahead and do that as well.